I'm, I, I'm, I'm starving right now. I'm really hungry. And my food's cooking, so I might as well record while it's cooking. <laughs> so hey guys, not a heart here, and uh, welcome back to uh, Pester Quest. Uh, we're back with Jade. Last time we died, and now we're not gonna die this time. And I think, uh, yeah. Anyways, let's go explore the rest of the house. All right, so yeah, we're gonna go see our house now. And I like the carefree, the carefree song. You know, good times. Sorry, I'm kind of tired. Like, I I work nights, so it's like it's a little annoying to freaking record sometimes. I guess it's like I'm just tired. But all right, let's just go. Oh. She hikes up her skirt and skitters down the spiral staircase, two steps at a time. You're a little interested in the high-tech devices lying on the workbench near her bed, and a glowing green crystal that you think is literally uranium, but Jadar is already gone, so you tear your eyes away from the- uh, and follow. The landing below her room is small and cinder- and cylinder- yes, what the fuck? It's a cylinder. <laughs> it features a gray closet looking device and platform on the floor. My room is on the top of the tower, but it's a, but this transportalizer will take us to the garden quick and easy. She hops on the she hops on disappear yeah, disappears in a flash of green light. You're a little you're a little non yeah, non plussed, but you've seen weirder. I don't I've never used that word in my life. Like I'm telling you, this game uses words I just never used. And that makes me think, am I stupid? Is, is, is my vocabulary not up to par like it should be, you know? But you step onto the platform. Here, a light click beneath your feet. And in an instant, you're standing in a lush garden atrium. Atrium, probably said that wrong too. There's an exotic plant, there, there are exotic plants as far as the eye can see, ranging from uh, psychedelic floral arrangements to tropical fronds and to fruits and vegetables. Tall windows blanket the walls and allow sunlight to stream in. It said windows are coated in a steamy mist. You feel like you just got cl uh, <laughs> clotheslined by a rain rainforest it's beautiful right it is honestly beautiful i'm actually just no no i would love to have a garden and like like if i can have a garden and like it can like take care of itself kind of like if i knew how to like oh okay i just got a word of these guys and just take care of it it'd be easy i'd love to have my own garden like i'm jealous i actually really like jade's house this is really dope you got all kinds of fruit and flowers and stuff like a greenhouse you have a nice greenhouse like yeah it's awesome like i i yeah jade i <sighs> Jade's cute as shit. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Jade opens up her arms and spins around, gesturing her various garden stations. You nod, it really is. Gardening is another one of my favorite hobbies. It's a great way to get your hands dirty and do some real work. And she's by herself. You might as well do some gardening, you know, right? And then the end result is really vibrant and beautiful. Jade weaves, yeah, waves her hand, uh, her, no, her rough and callous hands at you and strokes her fingers along the pinkish petal of a whatever yeah I, an 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 anemo a that's not how you say that i've heard of that flower before i just never i i never said it let me see a n e m o n e so m o n e should be like a moan right a moan moan like none mun mun so aninum uh, anemon Okay, and hums a little tune towards it. One of its leaves seem to curl towards her touch. When Jade pulls away, she skips towards one of the windows and motions you to follow her. All right, let's go. It's a beautiful island, vi uh, Vista, Vista, Windows Vista, hmm? that awaits your gaze. To your left is a towering mountain that might just be a volcano. Ahead of you is a small bay filled with giant lily pads and an old mossy temple. Beyond the island, a sea stretches out to a shimmering horizon, past the boundary lines and an entire world awaits, ever out of reach. This is my home. This is the uh, this entire island belongs to just me, Beck, and my grandpa. It's a very peaceful place. The greenery is so lovely. Yeah, sorry if I'm sitting weird. I'm not sitting straight. I'm like sitting at an angle because I don't feel like sitting straight. So, yeah, the greenery is so lovely, and the bay is very fun and take and to take a dip in. There's always a mysterious rune, uh, runes down there too. I've always been very curious about them, but Beck won't let me visit them. I guess he thinks they're too dangerous. Oh yeah, I mean yeah, I'm pretty sure there's some there, there's some fuck shit in there. Grandpa's been in there plenty of times before though. Could her grandfather give her give her a supervised tour? Oh, Grandpa doesn't really move much anymore. Oh yeah, I forgot. We don't learn about her grandfather because you know we don't have a gun to her head. But now you know we're good. 
He spends a lot of his time, uh, he spends a lot of his time having tea parties in the foyer, lol. He's quite old then? You could say that. Can you just tell me that he's dead, please? Jade wanders away from the window towards another one, whose view is exclusively centered on the rolling blue. She presses a hand against a misty plane, no, pain and sighs. Pan, pain, what? Pain, what? A panel, a pain, a... What the f- Okay, I think I said it right, but it just surprises me how... Against the pain. Like, a panel. A pain. What the fuck's a pain? You know, Dave talks a lot about coming to visit me here. I mean, all of my friends do, but Dave especially. Mm-hmm. Dave wants those ch cheeks. <laughs> In his usual Davey way, of course, which means making a lot of jokes and not sounding very serious about it. Yeah, I'm itching to put a safari hat on and come transferring down a doom death ar yeah, to get my ass murdered by an infodog and its eldritch retriever. <laughs> yeah. Oh, by infodog, the eldritch retriever, not infodog by... Okay, I got it. Yeah, you know me, guys. Hey. Stuff like that. I know he really means it, though. He wants to see me, just like I want to see him. But it's just wishful thinking. Jade, I can take you to Dave. Like, just ask me. He doesn't know where this island is. I know where this island is. Even I don't know where it is. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, that's true. She's been on it all her life. All deliveries here go through some company P.O. box my grandpa set up before he died. It's not marked on any maps. Because this is a special island with all kinds of important secrets on it, I guess. Or it was special. I was... Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But not anymore. Now I'm just a regular girl stuck alone on this dumb island for the rest of my stupid life. Whoa, you asked Jade if she's feeling alright. Yeah, I'm totally fine. Just peachy. Thanks for asking. Come on, let's keep up with the tour. There's no time for dilly-dallying. Come on, can my OC, like, think? Think real quick. Think, just come on, pick up the context clues. You ruined the continuity. Now she's just gonna be on the island by herself. So if anything, you should stay on this island with her for the rest of your life. And then after that, it'd be okay. You, 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 you'd make up for your sins. Actually, if anything, my job is to bring these guys together. If I fucked up the t timeline so much and the continuity is so messed up, I should teleport these guys together and they should just live their life together. Jay doesn't damn there have nobody. She doesn't need to live in this island. Dave's bro is gone half the time. Rose's mom is doing shit. I don't know. I don't even think Rose's mom would notice if she's gone. So they can all just chill at Dave's house. I mean, not Dave's house. Uh, they can all chill at John's house. Who the fuck wants to live at Dave's house? It's fucking hot as fuck. <laughs> and then with and after that with freaking rose it's probably raining half the time anyways my grandpa's collection room is up or, or up next the first one's full of his big game hunting trophies i'd never shoot an innocent animal and i think the trophies are pretty hideous but i do have to admire his great work in stuffing them i guess it is really hard to properly stuff and mount something trust me all he has, uh, and he has some cooler stuff on the lower floors, like all these badass knight statues, or uh, or these uh, faded blue portraits of pretty ladies. Okay, I'm gonna be honest. Most of Grandpa's collection stinks, but I think what's more, what's important is that what is all. Rep oh wait, but I think what is important is what it all represents to him. He's been all sorts of incredible, amazing adventures, and he has this huge array of interesting things to show for it. You tell Jade that her grandfather sounds like a hell of a guy. He sure is. Back when I was little, he used to go on trips all over the world and come back with so many interesting stories and new souvenirs. I was so odd. I guess a little jealous too. Sometimes he would be gone for days, even weeks at a time, and it would just be like me and Beck holding down the fort. It was always so happy when he came back and I listened to his tales without making a single peep, but he never asked me if I wanted to come along for any adventure, no matter how obviously how obvious it was that I did. And I guess that's just the way life for adventuring, I guess that's just the way, yeah, I guess that's just the way of life for adventuring, folks. There's no time to be tied down, even by people you love. They can stay at home and wait for you to come back. That sounds kind of sad. That's how it was for me and my grandpa, for my grandpa at least. What about you? You're an adventurer too, you visit all my friends, and you've certainly been to other awesome spots around the globe. So I bet you've left some left someone waiting for you too, haven't you? Oh no, I'm lonely. She's getting really close to me. Jade, you can't do that. 
you're too you're you you're too cute to be getting in my face because then then my character's gonna jump out the window or something. Frost floods your veins as you nestle into your heart with a burning chill. For some reason, for some reasons that you don't quite understand, Jade tilts her head and bores into you with wide, curious eyes. One of her hands balls up into a fist, and both of them are trembling as she watches you. Wait, why is one of her hands balled up in a fist? Are you good? Are you mad? Or am I mad? Geez, you're gonna have a you're gonna have to couch another kid through a parental issues, aren't you? You swallow down and suddenly yeah, you swallow down your sudden anxiety, force a smile, and remind Jade that you're suffering Yeah, from amnesia. Oh yeah, right. Well, it's just this feeling I, I yeah, okay, well whoa, whoa. Yeah, okay okay. Let's take that back. Oh right, well it's just this feeling I get uh I get you know. Yeah, okay, I'm just going to keep messing that up. Well, it's just this feeling I get, you know? I have great intuition. When she smiles, the corner of her mouth twitches. It's now or never. Would she like to talk? I said I'm fine. There's nothing to talk about. Unless you want to talk about, uh... Some of these flowers. Isn't this one such a lovely yellow? Surely there's nothing wrong with the good old feeling jam, right? Jade is an expressive, empathetic girl. Feeling jam should be her thing. You think that... You think that but she's still st steadfastly ignoring you. <laughs> hey, how about this orange with the goofy face on it? Don't we, uh, why don't we b boggle at, boggle, yeah, boggle, that's what it says, <laughs> at it for a while. Jade, something's wrong. <laughs> yeah, look at her face, come on, talk, speak your mind, Jesus. You need to talk this out. That's what you do, you're a talker, so why don't you, ah, uh, here we go. Yep, she said fucking. Here we go, you pissed her off. When they start swearing at me, I know I did wrong. <laughs> oh my god, just shut up. Please shut your stupid fucking mouth. Of course something's wrong. And that something is you. Well, I'm out of here. Goodbye. <laughs> There's a long pause. Jade stands there, her eyes wide, shocked at her own outburst. She wipes the tears from her cheek. She takes a shaky gulp, then sprints back upstairs. Oof, that didn't work. You stand there for a while, feeling like a tender grade A jackass. Yeah, triple A jackass. Steak with the baked douchebag potatoes on the side. Then you sigh and steed yourself and make and make the trek back up to her room. Jade is nowhere to be seen. Becca's pawn clumsily at the large, suspicious jade-shaped lump beneath the covers of her bed. You clear your throat and ask her softly if she wants to talk. It's cool, you say. You listen to the team drama all the time. This is this is some particular choice drama. Not that you like drama. You clarify. You just kind of exist in the prayer. Yeah. Yeah, you kind of exist in it. You're a drama magnet. And you made Jade cry. I don't like that. I don't like that. <laughs> you don't make Jade cry, all right? There's a long pause. You're just about to turn and leave when she pulls the covers off and turns to you. Her eyes are all puffy and red. Hey. Hi. I'm sorry I yelled at you. No, don't be sorry, because I fucked up with the timeline. It's not really your fault. I mean, it kind of is, but you didn't know you were messing anything up. It's not fair for me to be pissed at you. It's just, none of this is fair at all. Yeah, that sounds like life all right. You sit down on the bed and tell her the vent all about it. It's okay, you can take it. Yeah, come on, swear at me. Just swear at me. Call me a bitch ass freaking freaking fur for furry or something. I don't know. Have you ever spent your whole life waiting for something to happen and then it didn't? Well, your memory is pretty fuzzy right now, so you can't say if you have, but you think you understand a similar sense of yearning. Good God, you've yearned. Yeah, for friendship, you freaking freak. <laughs> Yearning is a good word for it, yeah. Let me try to explain. When I went to sleep, I would see this beautiful golden kingdom called Prospect and hang out there with people there, hang with the people there. I'd wake up with these fuzzy, half-remembered half feelings of happiness, visions of the future swirling around in my mind. It was nice. It was a good life. But there was a very lonely feeling and I couldn't make it go away no matter what I did. I would always tell myself, soon, Jade, soon it'll all change. And you will get to travel Prospect in your waking hours, you get to meet your friends in person, and you'll finally be able to live, like really live. I've waited days, months, years for that day to finally arrive, and then, it never came. I was so sure that it would come on John's birthday, all my dreams told me so, all the signs that were there, but it just didn't happen. And now I don't know what to do with myself. I was able to ignore the lonely feeling because I knew that it would disappear one day, but now that day has slipped by me, and it's like, 
It's all those years are catching up and crashing down on me all at once. I feel so small and helpless and sad. Like the loneliest girl in the world. I don't want to put this all on you. That would be that wouldn't be very nice, but it's just it's not it's not fair. Jade vaults from her bed and stamps on her foot on the ground hard. Her face flushes and streaks with tears and snot. She looks awful, frankly, like someone who's been holding it in all for all too long. Beck gets up and starts licking her cheek. She shoves him off until she can wipe her face off her sleeve. <laughs> Thanks, Beck. At least I've got you for a best friend, right? Jade settles back on the bed and strokes Beck's fur softly. I have a lot of complicated feelings about all this, I guess. So complicated and painful, I'd rather just pretend everything's okay. But now, I can't pretend anymore. And these feelings are all that are, that are left. And I hate feeling so glum. I hate sitting around being all sad and useless. It's stupid and pointless to waste all my fucking energy, and it's not who I am, and... And I'm just dumping all it on you. <laughs> I'm sorry. I really am. Man, you just completely fucked up this girl's life. She's apologizing to you? Now you feel like you've deliciously three-layered shithead whatever served- Yeah, okay, so you're just a piece of shit. You really want to help Jade. And while you, s you still don't quite get all this magical moon stuff she's been talking about, you do get how it feels to be lonely, and that's something you can help with. You offer her hand. You offer her your hand. You want to go see the world? Yes, let's go! She sniffles lightly and shakes her head. It's not gonna work. Yeah, it is. What do you mean it's not gonna work? Oh yeah, cause Beck probably might make Beck might do some bullshit. Well, there's no way to know unless you give it a try, right? She nods, stands up, and takes your hand. Yep, yep, Beck. Did, yep, Beck. You fucking stop, Beck. Beck, stop. <laughs> you focus on a familiar destination, John's house, but as you begin to dematerialize, dematerialize, Beck turns and stares at you. And you hear that familiar barking sound in your ear, and when the flash of light subsides, you're standing right here in Jade's room, only a few feet from where you started. What? See, I told you it wouldn't work. Come on, let me show you something. Jade fall hops up and shuffles down the staircase and you follow her. She takes you to the teleportation pad in the atrium. Isn't like an atrium like a, something in your heart? <laughs> These transportalizers are all powered by the thermal energy used uh, and is used each other as a beacon for the sake of the easy short range teleportation. But if you hook one of them up to a uranium converter and modify the coordinates specifically on a logic board, you can theoretically go anywhere in the world. Which I tried, see? She switches. She twists the top of the pad with her fingertips and pulls it off. It shows you the wiring underneath. It looks pretty messy, like someone's been made multiple attempts to rewire the circuits. But when I use it, it only led led to the exact same thing that happened just now. Beck uses his powers to prevent me from leaving the island. Maybe I got the coordinates wrong and I would have ended up stuck underground or something. But I checked and double checked my measurements. I think Beck just doesn't want me to leave the island. He wants me to stay somewhere he keep me safe at all times. He, perhaps he heard his name from above, or perhaps he just he has a sixth sense about it, because Beck wanders down the staircase and over to Jade. She gives him a soft stroke behind the ear. I love him very much, but as long as he's around, I'm stuck here. And because of the changes you made, that's how it'll always be. I'm just gonna have to get used to it, I guess. You see, now I'm gonna have to stay. I'm, 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 I'm just gonna stay with you forever, man. It's okay. It's all good. <laughs> Jade deflates against one of her gardening tables and offers you a wan, a wan smile. Wan smile? For a split second, you can swear you can see droopy doggy ears and tail tucked between her legs. Depression to this degree simply is not conductive to friendship. Even if it was, you would still feel pretty shitty about it. You should do something to cheer her up. And <laughs> challenge Beck for superiority. You know what? Beck, let's go. I have the better powers here, all right? You can teleport, but you know what? I can make it so that you never actually, I don't know. I'm not sure because the first guard didn't exist when regardless. So, but you know, I'm going to challenge Beck for his, you don't know. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to save my game because I, I, I don't save my game. So, it's okay. I'm going to challenge this man. Beck, come on, my, come on, my boy. I'm the better transporter here. It seems you've caused Jade's problems, even though he's probably no. It seems you, yeah. It seems to you that the cause of Jade's problems, even though he's probably not hurting her on purpose, is Beck. <laughs> he's a good dog and he wants to protect her, but the time for that has passed. Jade has a new omnipotent friend on her <laughs> in her life. She's got places to be besides this island. 
there's only one thing for you to do. You need to establish yourself as the new alpha of the pack. You must win the right to escort Jade to visit her friends. Okay, what was that? And why did it skip 15 things? I think that was my mouse. Shit. All right, depression. Okay, wait, wait, did I go, wait, did I go back? I think I went back. Yeah, I went back. Yeah. You must, yeah, you must, you must establish yourself as the new alpha of the pack. You must win the right to escort Jade to visit her, visit her friends. This is how dogs work, right? Yeah, it is. It definitely is, you think. You square up, bend your knees, and tense your palms. Mm, what are you doing? Don't worry about it, you tell Jade. You're practically an expert in Lucis wrangling techniques by now. In what techniques? She shouts behind you, but you're already charging. Beck doesn't see it coming at all, perhaps because it's such a spectacular, stupid thing to do. You go tumbling on the ground with him and manage to pin him. You know exactly what to do now. There's only one possible course of action, and it's been inculcated. Inculcated. What? Inculcated. Ooh, I punch you, word. I punch you. <laughs> With such metric gravity that you're entirely certain it will work as intended. You're gonna punch Beck? Oh, Jesus Christ. We're gonna punch Beck? Okay. Alright, let's see how this goes. Let's see how this goes. Yeah. <laughs> you fucking idiot! You punch Beck in the snout to establish superiority and immediately realizes it's not working as intended. He snarls and flares up neon green, energy crackling around his body. You wince at the heat washes over you as if you just opened an oven door. Your arm hairs stand stiff in electric terror. Where is he going to take me? Probably, I'm probably going to die again. Where are you thinking? This is a fight you can't win. Oh shit! I'm dying. Beck lunges at you and sinks his fangs into you. You yelp in pain, splitting and <laughs> spinning in your sight. Radioactive fire roars up your arm. Holy shit! I I'm dying! You yank yourself away from instinctively and try to teleport as you disappear. Beck teeth catches you in your shoulder and holds on tight. I died. You two go hurling through the nothingness and you're pretty sure you left blood splatter on some of the meta-narrative constructs like the website scroll bar and yeah i died oh i'm on durst okay eventually you come exploring you come exploding back into the cannon and bounce off a purple spire with an ungainly smack dislodging beck in the process you tumble on the bridge and scatter and you scatter some dudes in their goofy jester outfits and beck lands in front of you beck come on i'm sorry i'm sorry good boy can we call it even here he's oh my god I'm gonna get nuked. He snarls and green flames crackle the stone beneath his feet. Well, so much for that. You throw up your hands in front of your face and squeeze your eyes shut as Beck lunges again, but you don't feel the sting of his fangs against your flesh. I'm dead. Instead, you feel the singular, you singularly odd sensation of your body passing right through Beck as though you just had, just had a window thrown at you, like a reverse de defenstration? Refenstration? Un yeah, okay, I'm not reading any of that. Now I'm at the green sun, and I'm gonna burn. The world's beyond your eyelids strobe green. When you open your eyes, you find yourself staring into a massive veteran, veteran, yeah, sun. You think that, you think that, wait, yeah, you think that when, what? You think that went back, went, what? You see, there's just typos here, guy. You're gonna make me seem bad. You think that went back, yeah, when back went, <laughs> what the fuck does that say? Can he talk? I, I don't, you think that went back, went in for the kill. You must have phased through him as his power surged. It was pure dumb luck. You can't imagine what kind of precise timing would it take to pull that off on purpose. The good news is that you're alive. The blood loss is really doing a number on you. You can't focus on your powers. Your vision flickers at the edge and ringing in your ears louder. And flicker, yep. You only barely hear a voice behind you as your eyes glaze over. Excuse me? Who's this douchebag? So let's be nice. This douchebag looks very injured. I think they're gonna have to restart and try again. Better luck next time. Yeah. 
Wow. I actually got a game over. That just says game over. Oh, well, technically speaking, there was a thing called game. That's tragic. Damn. I keep making the wrong mistakes. <laughs> All right. Well, let's just okay. So that means that there must be there must be three. Yeah. So that means that there could be three endings. So Dave could have had a third ending, and I didn't know. I don't know if I should go back to Dave's story and try to see if there's a third ending, or I should just look it up.